المؤمن للنجاة المرتجى للشفاعة المفوض إليه دين الله السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك وأنا قد برحمت عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقي عله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين وعلى أخته العقيل عقيلة الطالبين زينب الكبرى وأخيه أبا الفضل العباس ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم المهدي من ولدي تكون له غيبة وحيرة وتظل فيها الأمم يأتي بذخيرة الأنبياء عليهم السلام There are many ahadith in the books in Usul al-Kafi Bihar Anwar and of course many other of the books that have been written about Imam al-Hujjah alayhi of the salati was salam المهدي من المهدي إلى الظهور for سيد محمد كاظم القزويني يوم الخلاص for كامل سليمان عصر الظهور for شيخ علي الكوراني of course there are many of them that have been translated for example بحار الأنوار that is 110 volumes by شيخ باقر المجلسي رضوان الله تعالى عليه the volume 51 and 52 that it's about Imam al-Hujja alayhi afdhalu salatu was salam that it's been translated into English and Farsi and Urdu. We have many ahadith. First thing first about who Imam al-Mahdi is and the Imam's descendants. He goes back to who and the lineage of the Imam. The reason for that, if you look into this ahadith, because today, in this time and age, we have many people that are doubting the very existence of the Imam. This very hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, and we're coming... And we are coming to the birthday of the Prophet in a few days, to the 17th of Rabi'a al-Awwal. The Prophet here says, Al-Mahdiyu min wildi. Al-Mahdi, Imam Al-Hujjah, Salamullah Alayh, Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Al-Sharif, is my son, is from my lineage. Why does he say that? The reason behind that, because there are many doubters that say that he doesn't belong to the Prophet, he's not one of the lineage of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, or we have the other doubters, they come and say what? That he's not born yet. If you look at this very hadith, this is the example, tip of the iceberg, if you can say, about Imam al-Hujjah, you see, number one, al-Mahdi min waldi First thing first, who he is. That's the first thing, his idea. You can say his uh, mini bio. And then after that, this is very alarming. What the Prophet says, تَكُونُ لَهُ غَيْبَةٌ وَحَيْرَةٌ He will have a غَيْبَة, a quotation, the occultation, the minor, and the major occultation. The major occultation today is more than 1,100 years. It's about 1,189 years now. If you count it precisely, you see, yes, it's that much. And then, of course, there is a minor and a major, Qaybatul Sughra or Qaybatul Kubra. And then comes what? And there is Hayra. That's very alarming. What's Hayra? 
There is a lot of deviation. وَتَظِلُّ فِيهِ الْأُمَمْ الْأُمَمْ أُمَّة means group of people. They all go deviate. They all go astray. How is that possible? See, shaytan iblis al-abalisa. You have to know your enemy. You know your friend, you should know your enemy. And it's fascinating if you read about shaytan and you know who shaytan is, iblis al-abalisa. The same shaytan who is known as Tawus al malaka was known as Tawus al malaka the peacock of the angels. Was known as peacock of, peacock of the angels because of his ibadah. One salah, the Imam says, Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib, one salah of the shaitan took him more than 600 years. That shaitan, that when Allah created, if you look into Surah Al Baqarah, there is a conversation between God and the Malaika, the angels. I will create a new being, I will create a new creation. They said, why? They will kill, they will shed blood. Allah said, no. I'm creating something that is different. And he's talking about who? He's talking about Ahl al-Bayt, alayhim afdhul salati wa salam. And then Allah created Adam. And then he created who? Eve. Adam and Hawa. He wasn't Adam and Adam, he was Adam and Eve. Male and female. Yeah? Male and female. And then Allah said, bow down, prostrate. They all did. No, oh, except for Iblis. He stood there. No, I don't want to. And in Quran Karim, you see many, many times Allah gives this example. Why? Allah wants to show you and tell you and teach you who your enemy is. He said, No. You created me from fire. I'm greater than him. And he's made of what? Clay? Mud? No. Allah said, If you do that, I will cast you away. I don't care. Then he declared war. He said, who? The humans. We. Shaytan in Quran and Kareem tells Adam and Eve, I want to teach you or tell you of something that is good. Just imagine. And he made them come out of paradise. And that was something good. Now, just think of that, that he's declaring war and he declared war against us. And Quran Kareem, Allah says, Inna shaytana lakum aduun mubeen. It's your enemy. Now, shaytan, the jinn, the whole jinn race, they are made of fire. You know, jinn are made of fire. We are made of what? Clay, mud. Yeah, he had his hand up, mashallah. <laughs> yes. And then we have the malak that are made of? light nur so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creation that he made this creation the jinn and the ends the jinn and the human beings we have something in, in common this is something similar that we have that we evolve we evolve they evolve in knowledge we evolve in knowledge and there is no limit of how high we go and there's no limit how low we go Understand what that means? This is very philosophical. If I want to go into it, it takes hours and hours. But we can go so high and we can go so low. So low. We can go so badly astray. Just look at some of the serial killers. Look at the ones who killed Imam al Hussein, for example. You always have something, someone who's bad, evil, and you have someone who is more evil than the evil. And you have someone who's mu'min, believer, and you have someone who's better and higher than the mu'min. And you have, of course, that. Iblis, he has a whole army of shayateen. It's not just him doing the whole job. No, he has an army. They work 24-7 overtime. There's no pay. 24-7. And he, we have a hadith that says, if he sees one of his descendants doesn't do a good job, he decapitates them. He kills them. He has a whole list of rules and laws. You have no right to go astray. You have no right to go a bit here, linear or lena here. No, no, you have to work hard with it. You have to do whatever possible to deviate people, to make them go astray. So this Iblis, when it comes to Ghaybat al-Kubra, major condition, the closer you get, pay attention to that, 
to the zuhur of the imam to the reappearance of the imam he puts more fitan in the world because he knows if the imam reappears that's it that's his end because you know after that there is a war and this ongoing war we had from beginning of time and this there will be another war evil and the good and the last war is going to be rasulullah and iblis and amir al mumin is with rasulullah this is all when everyone comes back and amir al mumin kills iblis so he knows this is it what do i do i get them here there so if you look at the fitan fitan is what the ways of making you go astray the fitan that we had 100 years ago the fitan that we have today are they different way different they're different different taste different color one of the ulama he saw iblis and iblis was holding different chains in his hand and he had ropes and he had strings and he had a lot of things and he said to him who are you he said i'm iblis the iblis of adam he said yes i'm now one he said why do you have these ropes you have chains thick chains you have small chains you have you have strings khayt, you have different colors he said look everyone is different some people some they go into hell because of their love toward women the woman eyes others because of the love toward alcohol others power others money everyone is different and why why are they different shapes because of that why are they different sizes he said some people are hard for me to pull them by side so i need a bigger chain some people they're not hard so i just use a string i just go, come here or a small rope he said, and there are people, and this says that to the alim, just by this. They run. Today it's not about this, it is about here, notification when it comes to the phone. As soon as it comes there, khalas. Where did the religion go? It went down. Where did the iman go? Well, this is what Iblis does. And Iblis, shaitan, in this time, more deviation, more fitan. Mu'min gets out of the house, a mu'min comes back a kafir, and vice versa. And vice versa. Now, if you look at the youngsters today, the youngsters today, if you don't, they don't have any foundation knowledge about Imam al hujjah salamu alayhi, our, our Imam. Now, how many times have you heard of the story of Kufans and Imam al Hussein? Many times, yeah? How many times you thought to yourself, if I was there, I will help him out. I'm saying, yeah, I will be there with him. I'm saying, a lot of people they say that, and they recite this. Ya laytana kunna ma'ahum fanafuza fawzan azima. Don't they say that? How many people have you seen them when they get up and they put their hand on the head? They recite du'a al hujja and they will scream, Allahumma kulla waliyak. But if the Imam comes, that same person would he leave his job for the Imam? Would he really leave his family for the Imam? Would he do that? No. That's why, you see in the time of Amir al-Mu'mineen, when they took the Khilafah from the Imam, a lot of people came to the Imam. They said to the Imam, why don't you fight these people? This is your right. This is your haq. Imam said, you know what? Really? Okay, no problem. You talk, let's see where the action is. Tomorrow come, tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, the sun is up. I want you here. I want your heads all shaved. If I have 50 soldiers, I will rebel. Let's look what I'm gonna do. The next day the Imam sat down waiting. One came, second one came, third one came. Some people came very late. The Imam said, look, there are a lot of talks that when it comes to action, no one really puts an effort. Now, when you go back to the story of Imam al Hussein, and we just finished with the Muharram and Safar. If I didn't learn anything from Muharram and Safar and I just cried for the Imam, that's fine, that's okay. But I have to learn from the history so I can build up for my own future. That was the Imam of their time, Imam al Hussein, and Imam al Hujjah is the Imam of my time, the awaited Imam. 
What do I do? First and first, my knowledge about the Imam must increase. The more of lectures I listen, and who do I listen to? Not everyone. Not everyone. Because of my language, I know three languages. I see a lot of people, unfortunately, in the Farsi speaking people, the, uh, the Arabic and the English. There are Arabic one, and mashallah, we have more than 50, 100 of them. The one that they doubt the whole thing. They start with something small. They start with the khums. First thing first, khums. And then after that, they start with what do we need, marja'iyya? After that, they start with hadith al kisa. After that, they start with dua tawassul. And then they start with Imam al hujja Is he born yet? Really? Is he born? And they doubt with these and mashallah. But go forward. English, do we have anything like that? Yes, we have. There are many people out there. Farsi, mashallah. We have many. So if I don't have any foundation, what, do I, what happens to me? And I have to learn of the fitan. I know this fitna comes. Because you see the hadith, what does the Prophet say? Lahu ghaybatun wa There is a ghayba and his occultation. And of course, it's very hard for us. Us as the believers of the Imam, for us is much harder than the Kufans. Much harder than the people in the time of Imam Hassan al Askari, for example. Imam Hassan al Askari, a couple of days, inshallah, we have his martyrdom. We will commemorate the martyrdom of Imam Hassan al Askari. What did Imam Hassan al Askari do? One of the things that Imam Hassan al Askari did, one thing, was prepare the Shia for the ghaybah, for the occultation. That you should stay on your belief, even if there is no Imam. Now, I've asked you today, have you seen your Imam? No. Have I seen my Imam? No. But yet, I believe in the Imam. Why? Because some ink on piece of paper? Yes. And my belief. My faith. But the faith needs what? Needs you to feed it. There is a letter, if you remember, I mentioned this in, I think, in MWA and uh, other places. I mentioned about the letter of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib to Imam al-Hassan. Long, long letter. Very long. I've been going through it in many majalis and I haven't even scratch the tip of the iceberg. That's how long it is. One of the things the Imam says, revive this heart of yours with mawadah. And then the Imam comes to another other place. Imam says, for the youngsters, their belief is what? Like a vacant land. Vacant land. If you buy in Kasula in this area, or in Liverpool, or in Campbelltown, I buy 500 square meters. It's vacant. I don't know if you've seen it in many lands, in many areas. For example, in the area I live in, there's two houses on the right. There is a vacant land there. It's been there for a couple of years. What happens to the people? When people see that there is a vacant land, no one takes care of it. Everyone takes their trash and they throw it on the land. Ah, oh, the fridge broke. What do we do? There's a vacant land there. Let's go throw it there. I've seen it with my eyes. They come, they throw trash or rubbish. With some people, because of their belief, and it's a vacant land, if you don't take care of that, other people come and throw things in it. And that's what the Fitan are today. Don't take it lightly with this alphabet thing. Don't think this is just the beginning. This is just a beginning. Just don't think this is going to be just that. They want to make it more and more. Now, normalize it. Tomorrow, let them practice it. Let them practice it. And if I tell the stories, that we have, Mr. Jirubillah. And this is the, some of the fitr. Now, if I ask the elders here, did you have this in your time? They might say, no, we don't have it. Even in the Western countries, it was aib. It was something not heard of. You know, it was very bad for them to see someone who's going down that road. Yes? But today, it's becoming so normal. Every company, every company out there, for example, the extra, you know, the chewing gum company, they were making commercials. They're making commercials just to support these people. A person, this is what Basira is, foresight. Abel Fadl Abbas, Qamar Bani Hashim, Imam al-Sadiq said about him, Kana ammun al-Abbas nafid al-Basira, sulb al-Iman. Basira is foresight. What do I do with these two eyes? Now, if I want to drive, I came all the way from Maryland now, and I do apologize for my, me being late. I had to chip in for someone to recite majlis on their behalf. Me driving from Maryland to here, 
What do I use the most? The eyes, yes? Is there any cameras here? Is the cameras there? The light, you know, it's red, green. And I was speeding a bit. Yes? What do you use? Your eyes. Why do you use your eyes? Can I shut my eyes down and I drive? Well, I'm not driving a Tesla. It's not autopilot. I'm driving a Nissan Pathfinder. So if I close my eyes, I'm going to crash. Yes or no? Yes. So there is another eye that is the third eye. It's called the eye of the Basira. And that eye is more important than these two eyes. It's from within. And that basira is to know your enemy and know your friend. You know your enemy. I run away from him, run away from his army, and not just the jinn, because now we have the jinn and the ins. We have shayateen al ins. We're not just the jinn. Yes or no? Sometimes you have the, the shaitan of the ends worse than the shaitan of the jinn. He will teach the, actually the others. That's how bad they are. So when it comes to that, I have to know my enemy and I have to know my what? My friend. Now, how do I know my enemy? And I see, mashallah, a lot of youngsters today. It's very, very clear. In one point, another point is a bit what blurry. What is blurry? Don't go after it. What is clear that it's bad? Definitely don't go after it. And this is another thing that the Imam said, Imam Ali to Imam Al Hassan, that he said, Don't run with people, they might change you. They might. There's a percentage that might change you. Don't do that. Now, I listened to this clip that might, you know, get me some knowledge. Why do you want to do that? Go to the source of the good. Live what is bad. And there are many things. They give you honey infused with what? Poison. And the others, they give you what? Poison. They give you poison. They say, here, cyanide. Take it. And the other one, they give you what? Honey infused with poison. If I listen to this alim, alim, yes? This fulan and fulan, and he might put me in doubt in some things. Don't listen to him. Don't. Go after people. They are 100%. Don't bother with these people. They might change your mindset. That's one. The other side, you know, let me bring some names because I do follow a lot of news. Andrew Tate. Do I listen to Andrew Tate? Now, if you look at his ideologies, is that something that the imams push forward? No. Do I listen to this because he's an influencer? So what? Today, people, they run after influencers. And whatever the influencer does, they run after them because of how many followers they have, how much money they spend every clip. Don't bother going after this kind of people. Andrew Tate, no way. Other ones, I don't want to ma mention their names, but al Alhamdulillah, you are all aware. Yes? This phone can be a source of good, and this phone can be a source of what? Destruction, evil. With my phone, if you take my phone, hundreds of majalis. You go to my YouTube channel, I'm listening to this lecturer, to that lecturer, the ones that are good. Yes? If you take other phones, you see, into there. Now, if I ask you a question, if Imam al hujjat tomorrow, and that is Friday, the day of the Imam, the Imam appears, inshallah. Yes? The and the Imam? Of Imam Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Oh. Yeah. Oh. If the Imam appears tomorrow and he says to you, give me your phone, would you give it to the Imam? Would you do that? Or tell him, I need to go to the bathroom, give me half an hour, go delete the whole thing, format the phone, and then give it to the Imam. Now, if someone tells you, give me your phone right now, some people are ashamed. They say, no, I don't want to. You have to know that the Imam is always there, looking at your amal. Fridays, and this is a hadith, that they come to the time of sunset, the Imam sees the amal, your sahif of amal. And the Imam looks at it, and in some occasions, the Imam said, Alhamdulillah, he's a Shia of mine. Now, what is the connection here? Shaitan, Iblis, doesn't care about the Westerners. 
the ones that are already going astray. He doesn't care about them. What does the shaitan do? Goes after the ones that are on Sarat al Mustaqeem. We recite this surah, Surah Al Fatiha. How many times a day? Ten times, yes? Ehdina Sarat al Mustaqeem. They asked Amir al Mu'minin, they said, Who are the Sarat al Mustaqeem? He said, Ali and Al Ali. Do we believe in that? Yes. So the Imam that you follow, Shaitan wants you to deviate. Shaitan wants you to go astray because he sees you have something. I'll give you another example. A thief, someone who steals, does he go to an empty house? Does he go there? Why? It's empty. There's nothing in it for him to steal from it. That's how Shaitan is. There's nothing there. He comes to a house, there is a, I don't know, a TV, some cameras, some fridge, some money, maybe some gold. He goes there. Shaitan sees you have an Iman, you have a faith, you believe in the Imam. That is why, why did the Prophet say that I saw in the Arsh written, in al Hussein Misbahu Hudan wa Safinatu Najat. Now, this has no time limit, as I mentioned, I think in Muharram. There's no time limit to that. It's not just 61 AH, it's throughout the life. 22 million people go to the Ziyat Arba, you know, for what? Entertainment? They are there to do what? No. Some of them, they sleep on the streets. They just go there to visit the Imam. Nisbaha Hudan, light of guidance, and he's the Ark of Salvation. Ark of Salvation. Why Ark of Salvation? Nuh. If you look at the Mawarith of the Anbiya, the inheritance that the Imam, Imam al Hussein, got from the Anbiya. We recite this in Ziyarat Warath, yes? We say that he is the inheritor of Adam, Nuh, Musa, Isa, Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Those are the elites. Ulul Azm, 124,000 prophets, the five of Ulul Azm are above them. And in Ziyarat Warath, you say, Assalamu alaikum Warath Adam, Assalamu alaikum Warath Nuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Musa, Isa, Muhammad, and Amir al Mu'mineen. If you look at the similarities of the Imam and these prophets, one of them is Nuh. Nuh created the ark to do what? To rescue them from the flood, from the storm. His own son said, No, I don't want to be with you. I will go on top of a mountain. I will be. A... Allah said, Leave him. He's not from you. Just imagine, if Nuh's son, he went astray, what protects me? What protects me? Me? Well, I don't see the Imam. I have to really put a lot of protection forward. And we come into a very, very hard and very, very sensitive times. And it's really crucial that every day I know what's happening with my family, with myself first. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum. What does the ayah say anfusakum? Like when you go to the airplane, what does the first thing the airplane does? Emirates or Qatar Airways or Qantas, whatever airplane you go to, they, they show you this video of the safety thing, yes? What do they teach you? What do they tell you? And you've seen it many times. They tell you if the oxygen mask comes down, you yourself first put it on before you give it to the others. Why? Because if you don't do that, you're going to run out of oxygen and you're going to collapse and you're going to be the cause of others dying as well so take care of yourself first then help others put it first for yourself and then help your children help your wife or whatever yes so same thing if i have to take care of myself first i have to see what is the issue with myself self-cleansing and we all need it we all need it what the issues i have the problems i have the time in management i have if you look today if you ask the youngsters today What's the first thing they, oh, I don't have time. Wallahi, you have time. We all have time. It's because of our, you can say, mistreatment of the time, we say we don't have time. We will sit down and watch a three hour movie, no issue. We will sit down and watch a Netflix show after show, and they call it bench watching, you know, for hours and hours. But when it comes to Salat al Subh, two rak'at, I don't have time. When it comes to recitation of some Quran, I don't have time. 
Because of that, mis you know, the way that we do with the time. And time plays a big role. Friday, every house that we have, and we are Mahdawi families, if really we believe in the Imam, Friday is the day of Imam Al-Hujjah. We start the day with Dua and Nujbah. If I'm not going to the Imam Barga, I'm not going to this Islamic center or that Islamic center. And today, a lot of Islamic centers, unfortunately, they're paying politics. I'm not naming any, but I'm saying it's general. And I've been saying it to them, stop with this politics. This should stop because they are the future. You should stop with this. The elders have to stop with this politics so the youngsters, they can follow. Because they are the next generation. They will take over. You have to have something right to give it to them and say, Fadr, take it. You take over tomorrow. But if there is that much politics, all right, some people, they say, I don't want to go. Okay, don't go. At least in your house. Your own house has to be a mambarga. Your own house has to be what? Husayniya. We, we are the, the Iraqis, we call it Husayniya. Husayniya means the house of Imam al Hussein. And if you go to many of the Iraqis' houses, I'm, I'm half Iraqi, Iraqi. Uh, you have a Husseiniyah. In, in one room, they have a Husseiniyah. Why? He said, I have everything for Imam al-Hussein. I should have at least a room for Imam al-Hussein, devoted for Imam al-Hussein. Many of them, they have the garage for Imam al-Hussein. So it's good to have this. Friday, start your day with Dua and Nudbah before they go to school, before they go to work. At least Friday, start the Hadith al kisa start with some Ad'iyya, at least one Hadith, one tradition from the Imam. Sit down and recite that. For the children. Let them recite it themselves. Let them. Today I was see, looking at my children. I have, alhamdulillah, five of them. They started playing with the cousin. Suddenly they started screaming out, La Baika Ya Hussein. And they are very young. They are younger than five. And I looked at them, subhanallah. Because I saw some of the people going to Ziyarat al Ba'in, they learned, La Baika Ya Hussein. And I, I was thinking, subhanallah, this is our children. They learn. That's why. The Prophet said about this end of time, see the Imams, the Prophets, the Prophet himself, Khatam al-Anbiya, he talked about this and he said, this is the time that you should really be careful. One of the things he talked about was in the presence of Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, this companion, and he talked about this. He said, in the end of time, people go astray. It, uh, this happens, this happens. Jabir and the other companions said, how could this be, Ya Rasulullah? For them, it was really scary, like a horror, horror story telling them. Because they see the Prophet, the Prophet is right there. He's sitting right there. They see the face of the Prophet, they can hear the Prophet. We don't have this. Rasulullah said, one thing, do good. The parents must do good and the children they follow. Salah, Dua, Ziyarah, Hadith. I'm today reciting a Hadith, the father says, from Imam al hujjah about Imam al hujjah and tomorrow, you will dad, you assign every child for them to sit down and recite. At least you have a, a chair in your house, sit down and recite for us one hadith from the Imam and explain a bit about this hadith. Now prepare yourself, go to school. Because you know the other side is working 24 seven. I'm saying this everywhere and not, no one is understanding this. They work in 24 seven. One rest, the other one takes over. One rest and the other one takes over. We, we take rest more than we do anything else. The program is once a week, half an hour. And this is really bad. It should be more and more. And more constant. That's why the Imam says, <laughs> Revive your heart with mawadha. It should be always revived. Or it will die. It will die. There is nothing in. You see him talking. You see him breathing. <clears throat> but he's dead from within. And that person tried to revive that person, see how hard that is. It's really hard. Now, if a child, a son, a daughter sits from morning, they wake up from morning until night, they're watching Taylor Swift. They're watching, I don't know, Andrew Tate. They're watching Fulan and Fulan and Fulan. And now we'll talk about Imam and Mahdi with them, see how they look at you. It should be more of the Imam in the house than these people. And they should know that these people are not for you to follow. Because now when it comes to this, and I do apologize for mentioning this, you know how many issues has come to me for divorces from youngsters? Just uh, last week I had an issue before I went to Brisbane for Arba'in, two weeks ago actually, 
a couple came to me and the woman is saying i'm i want divorce because of his addiction toward pornography and he's married he's married i don't want him anymore i don't want him i have three children but i want to run away from him isn't this something that we have in the community we have it unfortunately <coughs> and don't Son said, Sayyid, why are you mentioning this now? This is what's happening now. It's happening right now. You have all of that, hundreds of hours, billions of dollars has been spent on it. All of this filth. That's why he says, Lahu ghaybatun wa hayra. And the umam, they go, they go astray. They deviate. If they deviate. They go bad. And what do you do? And if there is one rotten apple, and so just, uh, if you look at it, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, if there is in the box one rotten apple, what happens to the other apples? It will get rotten. The one that is fresh will not get the rotten apple fresh. It will never do that. It can't. But the rotten one, if you put it side by side to the other apple that is fresh, look, that it starts to spread out. Not cancer, it goes to it. That's what happens when you have one should be taken off, thrown away. Thrown away. And it starts with this. And there is more mo'ada. More of advice. More of listening and reviving the heart. There is more protection. Joshan. What we call it, Joshan. Why is it Joshan? Joshan is body armor. In Arabic, we call it Joshan. Dua Joshan al Kabir. Joshan is body armor. Now, if I don't have any body armor, I go, th I go into the battlefield one one bullet i'm done it penetrates and kills me that's what happens with a lot of us the spirit the ruh the heart there's no protection for it it's just up there it's clear that's why the imam says ard al hadath the imam says in his letter to imam al hasan ard al hadath that means it's a vacant land Whatever you put in it, it will take it. It will take it. You want to build a five-story house, you want to build a beautiful house, or you want to keep this land for, to be, for it to be a trash land, for it to be filled up with trash. It's up to you. It's just the same thing with the child. The child, Allah gives us a, a child. Even ourselves, it's all pure. It's what you do with that. What you do with the pen and you start scribbling on it. It can be good, it can be bad. So we know now the enemy, Shaitan, Iblis. And in the end of time, he will bring out all of his arsenal. Bring everything out. And he's very smart. Don't think you're dealing with someone who's an imbecile. He's smart. He knows exactly what to do with you. There's a story of Abed, and I'll conclude with that because of the time. Sorry about that. There was a Abid who used to pray 24-7. Pray, fast, recite Quran. We have this story. It says that, this is in Bukhara Anwar. Shaitan spoke with his children. And he said, how do you deviate this one? How do you get him to go astray? Everyone says something. Woman, the other one said money. The other one said power. The other one said alcohol. He said, sit down, sit down, sit down. You don't know what you're talking about. One of them stood up and he said, I will get him to go astray with ibadah. Praying. How, how are we going to do that? Shaitan was curious to see what his son is going to say. This is a story in Baharan Anwar. He said, tell me how are you going to do? He said, I will pray so much and I will get him astray. Let me do it and I'll show you how I, I will do that. Okay, go. The next day, you know, they can shape shift, shayateen. Even into a, a dog and a pig, swine. Same thing with the angels. They can shape shift, but they can't do for dog and pig. But the shaitan, they can, the jinn. The next day he shape shifted. He came to this Abid's house, this worshiper. He knocked on the door. He opened the door. What do you want? He said, oh, I know who you are. You are Abid, your worshiper. Yes, you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You fast. I want to join in Ibadah. Really? Yes. He went in. All right. The Abid used to take some break here and there. Four rak'at here, take about half an hour break. 
fast, eat at least something when it is some for breaking the fast. Recite some, you know, Quran and then <coughs> taking some break again. But he sees this shaitan, he didn't know this is a shaitan, he thought this is another abid. He doesn't take any break. Torah God finished, he went to another Torah God. Another Torah God, another Torah God, another fasting, he will eat a bit of food and then he gets up and prays again. Yeah, this Abid was very curious. He said to the shaitan, he said to him, what's going on with you? Take some break. He said, oh, no, I can't, I can't. It's very hard for me to, to take a break. Take a break? I'm taking a break as well. Uh, but what is your story? Why is it that you so drive to pray that much? Look how shaitan plays this role, even with, with the Abid. He said, I have a story, but give me two minutes and we pray again. So he got up to pray and this Abid was waiting. All right, just finish your prayer. Let me talk with you. He was very curious. I want to become like him. I want to pray like him. I want to fast like him. This is hardcore praying. This is mashallah. This is more than anyone else. The shaitan finished. He said, sit down. Listen, if you don't answer me, you out of my house. Get out. He said, all right, I'll tell you my story. Listen, I wasn't like this. I wasn't praying that much, but I committed a sin. See, listen. I committed a sin. What did you commit? I said, I committed adultery. When I committed adultery and I wanted to repent, this repentance driving me to repent got, gave me that much of energy and it's pushing me to pray more, fast more, worship more. He said, then I like to do that. To commit the sin, to do more ibad. Who does this? Just imagine, subhanAllah, really? Yes. He said, then what do I do? He said, there is a woman, adultery. If you want to do it, she's in this area. He gave him the whole address, messaged it to him, navigate, go to this woman's house, knock on the door, and she will do whatever you want. All right. No problem. So he got in his car. Of course, there was no car. There. He got to the person's house. He knocked on the door. Everyone in the neighborhood, they said, He's here to guide her to the right path. But they didn't know his intention. The Abed's intention was different. He knocked on the door. The woman opened the door. She looked up. She said, why are you here? He said, like any other customer of yours. She said, really? You're Abed? You're a worshiper? And then she said that to him. Just imagine someone who does this for a living, Mr. Jirobanda. She's a sinner. She said, when you sin and you become mulawath, we say in Arabic, and become dirty, you will never go clean. Don't do that. Go away. Don't do this. With the ibadah, he's bringing them to go astray. With ibadah. And this is one of the examples. One of the examples. We have hundred more. He's talking nice. Yes. But what is his message? Look into his message. Even if you look at the religions that are 100% false, there is 1% of good in it. So you bring down the 100% to 99%. There is at least 1% of good. Yes, why? Because they want to, you to come to them because of that 1%. If you look at, for example, the Baha'is. Baha'is, go talk to the Baha'is or read about them. The Baha'is, if you look at it, we worship all gods and we pray all prayers and we worship the god of Musa and Isa and, and, and the prophet but we're not Muslim, we're not Christian, we're not Jews but we worship all of them and we our religion is to be good Allah doesn't want that Allah doesn't want that now you make your own religion doesn't work like that like if I wake up for Salat al-Subh and I say today I feel a bit more energized I want to pray four rakat instead of two Allah says I told you two why you want to pray four is Salat al-Maghrib al-Isha for Shah Ramadan. It's time for you to break your fast. No, I'm going to break my fast at midnight. Allah says, I don't want that. I told you from Ahsan. From that time to that time, there is an allocated time for you. So why do you want to do more than that? There's no need for you to do more than that. So if I follow this line, number one, and number two, I follow Ahl-Bayt and al how can I hold on to this faith? Let's wrap it up now. I follow Ahlul Bayt. I follow the light of guidance. I get on board of the Ark of Salvation. And it doesn't matter which age and time I'm in, which country I'm in, because we think we are evolved, but 
what we are. We have more fitan. That's all we have. There's nothing else. If you look at it, we are the same human beings. We have more fitan. Yesterday was one or two things. Today, with one message, you can from from the end of the world. It's I think New Zealand. Yes, yeah. To the top of the world, the message goes in a matter of seconds. You can destroy a person or build the life of a person. That's why you see a lot of divorce rates, rates goes up and the marriages, they go down, unfortunately. And because of that, because they're not educated, they don't know what they have to do. It's all about get them to marry each other. And I ask many of the people that come for divorce to me, do you know the right of your husband? No. Do you know the right of your wife? No. And why are you married? Well, I had, you know, the urges and I thought this is it. But he knows exactly how much is the, the, the dowry is. He knows that. The dowry is 100%. But know the rights of one another? No. You know the reason actually for the marriage? And you see, mashallah, here, there is a lot of youngsters here. They are about to embark on this journey, inshallah, for marriage. From today, you have to think of your future. Because you're going to invest. You're going to invest not just money. Forget about money. Your life, you will be invested. Your life, you're going to invest your life because tomorrow you will have children and you have many responsibilities for your children. It's not a joke. It's not a... I told actually a, a couple when they came to me, uh, he came to a point and started screaming at them. I said, do you think marriage is a joke? Eh, divorce so today, tomorrow get married again. What, what do you think is that? This is not the marriage. This is not Islam intended for you. You have to know why you're embarking and know the hukuk of everyone else. And you're about to do that. But first thing first, educate yourself. Educate yourself. Sit down yourself and have a whole program of what I mentioned with the program. I, I, even at your house, every house has to be a Husayniya. Every house has to be a Imam Barga. Every house. Every house has to have a member that you at least one hadith a day. We eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Tomorrow, don't eat breakfast, no lunch, no dinner. Let's see how many days you can go without food. You say, I can't. I have to. Because the body, the physical body needs what? Nourishment. But when it comes to the spiritual body, to this heart, well, I do it once a week, once a month, once a year, and they it, it dies out. Ah. And this shouldn't be happening. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says, Allah, Allah, Allah. And the Imam comes with the dhakhira of the Anbiya. Last and last, build a relationship, a connection with your Imam. Imam al-Hujjah. Tomorrow Friday when you wake up for Salat al-Subuh, and I'm sure all of you have a backyard, yes? Go sit in the backyard after Salat al-Hujjah and talk with the Imam. Talk with him. I'm talking to myself, no, no. Talk with him, with the Imam. Open your heart to the Imam. And see if the Imam listens. Of course the Imam listens. We are his followers. Open this connection with the Imam. One salawat a day, hundred salawat a day, one surat yasin a day, give it to the imam. And say to the imam, hold on to my hand because I'm in need of that. I'm in need of that. This should be a connection between us and the imam. And I have to prepare myself. If tomorrow you invite anyone to your house, you prepare the house, you clean the house. Now the, the brother that invited you tonight for this majlis that you came, he got the microphone ready, he got this ready, he got the food, he got the... He spoke with the speaker, he spoke with you, he invited you, you all came. But if, just imagine if someone invites you to their house for dinner or lunch and you come and you say, brother, I haven't cleaned the house. I haven't prepared any food. Can you order something from Uber and you see what happens? He said, brother, you know what? Take, take your invitation and that's for you. And you go back home. The Imam, you waiting for the Imam. We have to prepare ourselves for the Imam. Tomorrow the Imam comes. Am I, am I ready for the Imam? I should be ready for him today. It should be this connection with the Imam, sallallahu Sit down, talk to the Imam. Know the Imam. Know the fitan that comes later on, that he can stay on the right path. And that is why the Imam, Imam al-Sadiq says, recite in the end of the time, time of the major occultation, 
And I mentioned this many times. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Muqallib al-Qulub, Thabbit Qalbi ala Deenik. The Imam said, Imam al-Sadiq, morning, night, daytime, anytime. You wake up, read it. You go to sleep, read it. You're about to eat, read it. Every time, read it because you need it. Every time, read it. So why it is that the last message was to connect to the Imam. Maybe you don't have any connection. Build a bridge between you and the Imam. And this should be only you and the Imam. And it, everyone in their hearts, they have something they want to talk to the Imam. Talk with the Imam, whatever you have in your heart. Financial problems, talk to the Imam. Marriage or problems, talk to the Imam. Looking for a wife, talk to the Imam. Whatever it is, you open your heart to the Imam. And he's a Rahmah. He's a mercy to mankind. Isn't that what we believe in? We believe that the Imam is a Rahmah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the ayah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And the Imam, Imam al-Hujjah, is Rahma lil'alameen. And I should really hold on to this, to this Imam and never let go. Not even a day. If one day, if, if one day, I might go right and left, I come back even stronger. I hold on tight. And I see, what did I do wrong? And I learn from my mistakes. I learn from my mistakes and I hold on to this right one. Because Ahl al-Bayt has given us many ahadith, as I mentioned in the beginning. There are many ahadith, many ad'iyah, many examples. Look at the companions of Imam al Hussein, how they devoted themselves to the Imam al Hussein. And Imam al Hussein companions, they became immortal. You might say immortality, yes. Immortality was achieved by them. It says that death lied. Imam al Hussein is immortal, and every year his name will be stronger. I and mean, this is what's happening every year. You see it being stronger and stronger. And this is not in our hands. I don't think because I'm a Shia, I'm put, I put the majlis up. No, 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 this is not us. This is in the hands of God the Almighty. Allah wants this to happen. And it will just happen and happen and happen. And it will get stronger like the Sayyidah Zainab said when they were about to depart to Karbala. She said to Imam al Zainal Abidin Ali ibn Hussein, on this plane field that you see them laying there, being cut into pieces. And they, the Imam body was crushed with the horses. The Sayyidah says, don't think this is going to go away. They died in vain. No, people will come. And she's talking about the Shia. The people will come and they will put the alam. Alam is a flag. And this alam will rise up and up, 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 up. They tried, Sayyidah Zainab says, they tried throughout time to bring it down. They see it goes up more. And bring me anything in history that has same theme. No, no, no. No. Mas'ab bin Zubair, when he died, they tried to do the same majalis for Mas'ab bin Zubair, reciting the maqtal and bringing up these alam and starting some lectures for him. Many people today, if you ask them who Mas'ab bin Zubair is, they said to you, I have no idea. But Imam al Hussein, how many years they tried, how many tyrants they tried to bring his name down, but he went up more, more. And stronger, and today you see 22 million. Just for Arba'in, if you look at throughout the year, more than 100 million go to the Ziyar of Arba'in. Now, if you go to Karbala, you see it's a small city, but the city that is small has the heart of millions. Millions. So we go back to Halal Bayt. We shouldn't be afraid. I have Halal Bayt, and I have to remind myself first. There are rahmah lil alameen, there are mercy on mankind. And then, of course, take my children's hand and put it in the hand of Ahl al-Bayt. And I say to them, hold on to them. That we don't go astray. Abu al-Fadla Abbas, Ramallah, alayh, Qamar bani Hashim. We have many ahadith of Bahim. Nafid al-Basira, Sul bani Umar. Jahada ma'a Abi Abdullah al-Hussein, wa abla bala al-Hassana. He said that, Yazid ibn Muawiyah when they brought him the heads of the companions, of the family members, he said, tag them. I want them to be tagged. So they tagged them. They put the names and they placed 
the tags on the ears. And then he looked, he said, take all of them away except for four. Put the, the head of Hussein ibn Ali next to me. The head of Qamar Bani Hashim, Ali al-Akbar, and who? And Qasim ibn al-Hasan, salam Allah. I take example of Qasim ibn al-Hasan and Ali al-Akbar. Ali Akbar, when he saw his father, they about to, just a side note, about to enter Karbala, Imam al Hussein closed his eyes for moments and then he opened his eyes and he said, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'un. Ali al Akbar said, Oh father, why do you say Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'un? Young man, he's in his 20s, he's very young. He said, Oh son, I closed my eyes for moments and I saw someone riding a horse. He said to me, The caravan is going and death is going with them. He says, our death, we are moving forward to our death. He said, oh, father, are we on the right path? He said, yes. So it doesn't matter for us if we go to death or death comes to us. This is who? Ali al-Akbar, 27 years of age. Now, someone younger, as I mentioned, the last one was the head of Qasim ibn al-Hasan, Allah alayhi, the son of Imam al-Hasan al-Mushtaba, the son of Ahl al-Bayt. When the Imam said to his companions, tomorrow we all will, will be killed on the day of Ashura, he said, Ya Am, or oh, Uncle, am I also going to be killed? He said, How do you define death? كيف الموت عندك? قال في نصرتك أحلى من العسل. For you, it's sweeter than honey. So he said, Leave me these four heads and take the rest away. He placed the head of Imam Hussein next to him and he started to strike the head, the face, <laughs> the lips of the Imam with the wood that he had in his hand. And he started reciting his poems, saying that I have taken revenge of what your forefathers did to my forefathers in Badr and Uhud and Hunayn. And then he started to look into the face of Qamar Bani Hashim, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. He looked into the face of Qamar Bani Hashim and he was staring at it. And he was amazed. He said to the army, the soldiers that came to the court of Yazid, how did you defeat Hussein when he was with him? Pointing out to Qamar Bani Hashim, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. Every one of them started saying something. He said, no, 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 none of you is telling the truth. One of them, one of them, he told of what happened on the day of Ashura. He said that we killed the companions of Hussein. One after the other was martyred by the order of Habib ibn Mudahir. When the companions finished, his son, that one there, pointing out to the head of Ali al-Akbar, he was the first from the Hashemites to take, to take permission from his father. And he was the first from the Hashemites to be martyred. And the last of the Hashemites from the army of Imam Hussein was him, Qamar Bani Hashem, Abel Fadl al-Abbas. We are all staring at the camp of Hussein. What's going to happen next? Who's going to come to fight? And it was only him and his brother Qamar Bani Hashim. We looked at the face of Hussein and we saw Qamar Bani Hashim approaching him. The hadith said, when he saw Qamar Bani Hashim coming, he said, brother, don't come to me because I know you what you want from me. Go back, brother, go back. He said, oh, brother, I'm here, but I want to go and fight. Give me permission. Let me go and fight. He said, oh, brother, if you go, what happens to my army? And just think of this. Was there anyone left in the army of Hussein? It was only Qamar Bani Hashim, Abel Fadl al-Abbas. Imam al Hussein said to him, oh, brother, if you go, what happens to my army? Who is going to be here with me? He said, oh brother, don't you hear the sound of Sukaina? Don't you hear the cries of Ruqayya? Don't you hear the cries of the children? They calling out, Al-Atash, Al-Atash. They are all thirsty. Brother Hussein, of course he didn't say brother. He says, Sayyidi wa Mawlai, 
Sayyidiya wa Mawla, give me permission to go get some water from the Euphrates for them. The Imam looked at him and he said, for that I give you permission. So Abal Fadl Abbas, Qamar Bani Hashim, Alamdar, he went to the tent where they had the water skins. And he went into it, he grabbed one, and then he went on his horse riding his horse toward the Euphrates. This soldier is telling the story to Yazid. He said he charged at us, and the Euphrates was surrounded by 4,000 enemy combatants. When he came, he threw the right wing on the left, and the left on the right, they started running. He says to Yazid, oh Yazid, he was like a lion coming and attacking a herd of sheep. We all started running away, scared of Qamar Bani Hashim Abel Fadl Abbas. And then he entered the Euphrates. When he entered the water of Furat, he put his hand in the water and he grabbed some water to drink. <coughs> As soon as he was about to drink, he had some water and he had it close to his mouth. He started reciting this poem. There was a hesitation from him. Ya nafsu min ba'dil Hussein, huni wa ba'dahu la kunti aw takuni hadha al Hussein, sharib al manuni. Imam al Sadiq says, the heart of Abel Fadl Abbas on the day of Ashura was fire from the thirst and he was in need of that water and today if you hear maybe he drank from the water would you judge him would you say why but of course he doesn't do that loyalty is about fadl abbas devotion is about fadl abbas what does he do he says i'm not going to drink this water when my brother hussein is thirsty I'm not going to drink from this water when Sukaina is thirsty, when Raqaya is thirsty. He threw the water on the water and he filled the water skin with water. He said, this soldier is saying this to Yazid ibn Muawiyah. He said, then he went back. He's trying to go back to the camp of Hussein. Omar ibn Sa'ad, he screamed. He said, surround him from every side. Don't let him reach the camp of Hussein. If they get this water and they drink from it, none of you will survive from them. So we surrounded him from every side. He said, we started shooting arrows at him, thousands of arrows. And he, on his mind, he had one mission, to take this water to Imam Al-Hussein, salamu Allah alayhi. Ah, and then, he said, Hakim of Notofail come, came from the right side and he striked him on the arm, on his right arm, and he severed it and he cut it. He fell to the ground and he started calling out, Wallah, in Qata'atumu Yameeni, Hada al Hussein, Ah, Sayyidi Manuni. And then he said the other soldier came from the left and he's cut his left arm. He called out, Wallah, oh, just imagine this, this person, loyal companion of the Imam, loyal brother of the Imam. They cut his left hand, his left arm. What does he say? Wallah, bebaghihim qata'u yusari, ya Rabb. Alqihim harran nari. Umar ibn Sa'ad called out, he said, now, Target the water skin, target him. He said they shot him with an arrow on his right eye and another arrow on the water skin. He doesn't care about his eye, he cares about the water. <coughs> when the water fell to the ground, he stood there, doesn't know what to do. Do I go back to the Farah to grab more water? Or do I go to Hussein? But how could I go to Hussein when I don't have any water? And he said at this moment he was there standing 
and he doesn't know what to do. Go back to Farat or go back to the camp of Hussein. Agami combat and came from the bath and hit him with the iron on his head. This is when he's for the first time when he fell to the ground. He called out, Wa Wa Husayna. Oh brother Hussein, come to my aid. Oh brother Hussein, I've fallen to the ground. The hadith says, when a person falls from the horse, what do they do? They bring their hands forward to protect their face, to protect the eyes from falling on the ground. But Abel Fazl Abbas had no arm. He fell to the ground on his face. Imam al Hussein came to Abu al-Fadl Abbas and he says, Hussein ibn Ali, when he came to Qamar Bani Hashim, it was different. This soldier is still in Yazid ibn Muawiyah. When he came to Ali al Akbar, it was different. When he came to Qasim, it was different. But when he came to, to his brother Qamar Bani Hashim, it was way different. First thing Imam al Hussein did, he ran after the soldiers and he said to them, Come back to me, fight me. How could you kill my brother like that? That is the first thing Imam al Hussein did. He, this soldier is still in Yazid. And then he said, The other thing that Hussein did, a 58 year old Imam, he was standing there crying and his tears coming down on his face. And he brought up his sleeve, starting to wipe his tears like a child losing a brother. And then he said, He came to Kamar Bani Hashim. He went to him and he said, Oh, Kamar Bani Hashim calls out. Give me a couple of moments. He said, what do you want with those? He said, so I can say my goodbyes to my brother Hussein. He said, oh man, I am Hussein. Brother Qamar Bani Hashim, I am Hussein. He sat down next to him and he placed his head in his lap. Abel Fadl Abbas removed his head. Again, he placed it in his lap. Again, he removed it for the third time. Imam al Hussein said to him, Brother, why are you doing that? <laughs> Leave your head in my lap. He looked up. Ah, oh, with that eye, one with the arrow in his eye, and the other one that had the blood on it. He looked up and he said, Oh, brother, now you hold my head in your lap. Moments later, who's going to hold your head in his lap? لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون وسيعلم الذين ظلموا آل محمد أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين It is Laylat al Jum'ah, Thursday night, and it is the night of the Ziyar of Imam al Hussein, Salaam Allah alayhi. Sayyid al Shuhada, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the tawfiq of the Ziyar of the Imam Qareeb and Ajil, and, and of course his intercession in the hereafter. Raise your hand together, we're going to recite the Ziyar for yourself, for your family, for your bro beloved brothers and sisters, and of course for the deceased. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك وأناخت برحلك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين وعلى أخته العقيل عقيلة الطالبين زينب الكبرى وأخيه أبا الفضل العباس قمر بني هاشم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه 
في هذه الساعة وفي كل وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه وأرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا يا رب الحسين بحق الحسين اشف صدر الحسين بظهور الحجة اللهم عجل وليك الفرج اللهم عجل فرجه سهل مخرجه اجعلنا من أنصاره وعوانه يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل عواقب أمورنا خيرا اللهم لا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا ظرفة عين أبدا يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك الفاتحة قبلها الصلاة على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين يا حسين 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 يا